so it's eight in the morning and we are in Zion National Park. I'm here with an additional person who's making funny faces at me. So I've got Dominic, my husband, and then we've got my sister-in-law, Jasmine. So we planned on doing the Narrows today, but the drive ended up taking a lot longer than we expected from home. And we ended up getting to Zion with only a couple hours left in the day. So we did like a short little hike through the canyon. And then by that time the sun had set and we were having a lot of issues finding a spot at some BLM land that's just, um, just outside of Zion. So basically, long story short, we didn't have any time this morning to rent any gear to go into the Narrows because I know you need a lot of waterproof gear. So we're just doing the hike that's basically above the Narrows and we also brought some water shoes. So we might just go into the Virgin River just a little bit just to kind of get a taste of what the Narrows is, but not do an extended hike because we don't have the right gear for that. And it is a little chilly. It's beginning of October. Yeah, just a short morning in Zion before we drive into Colorado later. Last night was so cold. We're at Sylvan Lake State Park in Colorado. After we left Zion, we basically just spent the entire day just driving here. We're kind of near Eagle, Colorado, so kind of in the middle of Colorado, but um, we got here last night when it was dark and I knew that we were like close to the lake and we are pretty close to the lake, so it's, it's really beautiful. It was just so cold last night. Um, we woke up this morning and the windshield on my car was actually frozen which is probably one of the, like, maybe one of two times that we've actually woken up to that, so um, I actually slept with this jacket. I was so cold. Now it's, now that the sun's out, it's starting to warm up a little bit, so it's really nice. Thinking about doing some yoga, maybe. Um, we're all kind of tired of sitting in the car, so it, might, it would be really nice just to do some yoga. We also talked about going for a swim, but I don't actually know if you can swim in this lake, so I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to go to the other side where there's an information board and just see if we can swim in the lake. A little cold plunge kind of wakes you up in the morning. I love Colorado. I mean, I know a lot of people say that, but it is for good reason. Colorado is beautiful. I'm just, I'm really, I love the ocean. Absolutely love the ocean, but I am 100% a mountain person. And coming up here with aspen trees, they've been changing. So all the aspen trees are like yellow leaves and it's just really beautiful to see. We're going to continue heading further east today and end up in Boulder tonight. We're going to stay in a hotel. I haven't really had good luck with finding camping spots outside of Rocky Mountain because we were just here in May in our previous video when we went up to Rocky Mountain the first time. And I really just couldn't find very many camping spots or at least ones that were available that were like near Rocky Mountain. So um, we're going to stay in a hotel in Boulder again. Do some hiking there. Might stop in Breckenridge for lunch. I just love this fall weather. We're getting we're not really getting a lot of fall weather in San Diego, which is pretty normal. So it's nice coming somewhere where you can experience the cold crisp mornings and the leaves changing. I know I hate to be one of those leaf peepers, but I'm totally a leaf peeper, so I'm just gonna own up to it. <laughs> oh yeah, we saw a fox this morning. That was really, really cute. 
It looks like a really healthy looking fox. It had like a huge bushy tail. It's one of those things where like you turn the corner and you're like, oh, there's a dog. And then you're like, that's not a dog. I'm just going to sit here next to the lake, listen to the birds, and maybe get some video if, we see, if I see anything. Seven thirty in the morning, and we are at Rocky Mountain National Park. We were just here in May, so it's uh, nice to it's nice to already be back and be back in the fall. The aspen trees are a little bit past their peak, so they're not like full. The leaves aren't fully on the aspens, but there's still a lot, so it looks beautiful. We've got a big hike today, huge hike, um, eight and a half miles, I think, minimum, with about seventeen hundred feet elevation gain. Here's my sister-in-law, Jasmine. This is her first time hiking at altitude, or elevation, I guess I should say. And uh, how you feeling? Good. Good. <laughs> I'm breathing. Breathing. I think it's supposed to be a pretty tough one. Um, there's it goes to like a glacier, which is like our ultimate goal, but I don't know if we're going to make it because apparently there's a frozen waterfall and a lot of ice. So here's where we're going. I'll flip the camera around. We've made it to the lock. Um, I think it's a little over halfway on the trail. As you can tell, a little out of breath. We're getting close to about 10,000 feet elevation. Um, the lock here is stunning. There's snow in some of the cracks. This is just like early October as well, so there's already been snowfall this fall. Um, we're gonna stop at this lock, have a little snack, drink a little bit more water. We really don't want Jasmine to get elevation um, or altitude sickness because she's not used to this elevation. And to be honest, it's even hard for those that are used to it because it's pretty high up. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? This is so gorgeous. Look behind me. I hope that captures a little bit of what this view looks like. This is a straight uphill from here. This lady behind me is absolutely smashing it. She's doing so well. She basically lives at sea level. And in England, there's really not a lot of high peaks. And so this is one of the first times she's done this. And she's doing fantastic. Because we are at 10,500 and we're gonna be closer to 11,000 feet.
just gonna film a little part when we got up to the top at Sky Pond and it was in, I think it's Andrews Glacier. I'll correct it here if it's wrong. I was gonna film a little lunch part, but um, when we got up to the top, I went to go to the bathroom and when I was coming back, I got my, I don't even know what happened. I think I got my boot like stuck in a branch that was sticking out of a rock and I just ate it. <laughs> Um, smashed my like shin on some rock and my got my hands a little bit um, a little bit uh, bloody it didn't hit my knee thankfully so I just feel like it just kind of it doesn't hurt as much to walk as it might if I hit my knee joint so um, that was fun <laughs> but yeah so we went back and um, just had some lunch in this little area where we saw marmot earlier I couldn't get a video of it so we just sat there had lunch and now we're on our way back down Overall, probably one of the most difficult hikes that we've done. Um, it was mainly the scrambling, like towards the end. There was some frozen parts to it. And it was just kind of, you just had to navigate because there was a waterfall and then there were some frozen areas from the waterfall, like the spray from the waterfall. And so trying to scramble up those rocks and avoid the ice with the combination of just like the spray from the waterfall and the ice and scrambling, it's all at the same time and I don't really have very, I only have one video of me doing it, but um, it was, it was a struggle, I'm not gonna lie. And then um, we got up to the first lake and then it was like, oh, this isn't the end. That was just the first lake. There's another lake behind it, more scrambling. Um, and honestly, the second lake, I don't know if it was even worth going to. It's called Sky Pond and I don't think it was necessarily worth the trek because I thought the view from the first lake, um, I forgot the name of the first lake, I'll put it here. The view from the first lake was a better view in my opinion. Very difficult hike and I'm just so freaking proud of Jasmine. This is the first time that she has ever climbed anything at this elevation, especially with this intensity. It's labeled as hard on our, all trails. They're filling up our water right now from, uh, from the stream behind me. So hopefully you can hear me over the stream. and I started this new thing in like Yosemite and I carried on with it in lesson. Whenever I see like a little tiny pine tree or something that's growing on the side of the trail, I give it like a little, little pet and I just say, good luck. I don't know why, but I just really love the little tiny trees. I know I talked about it in Yosemite, but the little trees are just so stinking cute and I just want them to prosper. So I give them a little good luck. I know it sounds like I'm crazy, but there is scientific studies that say that plants grow better when people talk to them. So I feel like I'm doing my part. So now that we are at the end of the hike, I'm very sorry for almost killing you. I know you came over for your vacation and I almost killed her on that hike, but how do you feel about doing it? Um, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lauren did tell me at the beginning that it was classified as a hard hike. Well, um, she asked like about halfway, well, no, after we finished like the scrambly part and we came back down, she goes, oh yeah, what was this rated on all trails? And I was like, hard? <laughs> I didn't hard. I didn't tell her that before we went up, so I'm really happy with you. Did yeah, a good job. thanks. I went into the hurt locker, I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah. And I got a bit grumpy, <laughs> but then Lauren fell over, so I snapped out of it pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, my knee's doing okay though. We're, yeah. uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. We're gonna go to, back to the hotel and we're gonna sit at the pool, drink some cocktails. Yep, and reward ourselves for pushing ourselves. Yeah, go to a brewery tonight because really it's Colorado, you know. Yeah, yeah, good job. Woo! <laughs> so, this is the next day and we've lost one of our party. Dominic went home. We dropped him off at the airport and in Denver and um, now it's just me and Jasmine so we've had a nice day we've been driving south of Denver and we stopped at Garden of the Gods we weren't there very long because we wanted to make sure that our main stop for the day is where we are now we went to Garden of the Gods and we did we went to the visitor center and we kind of hiked around a little bit saw some of the pretty rock formations and now we are at the Great Sand Dunes National Park and man this elevation is still not a joke 
I don't know how long it takes for you to get used to altitude. I think it's something like two weeks or something. Still doing physical activity at this altitude is a little exhausting. Jasmine has trailed on ahead. We've taken off our shoes. It's really, really windy here. Um, yeah, this is just insane. Like the closer you get, the crazier these dunes look. Okay, we're about to go up this dune and I'm not even gonna show it to you on camera because it's not gonna show how steep it is and how hard it is because the sand is hard to walk in. And if Dominic was here, he'd be like, why aren't you climbing up that one over there? Like the tallest one. We're tired, okay? We did a long hike yesterday. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you can touch. Look, you can touch. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna film you from this way. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> She's got it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh. The altitude doesn't help Ooh. either. Oh my god. So out of breath. <sighs> wow. <laughs> that wasn't even a big dune. I feel really. Whew, I feel really weak. <sighs> what are your thoughts? So far on these crazy crazy sand dunes behind you well i said earlier this is like like it's something out of a i don't know like a theme park you just think yeah we're gonna have this themed area here and then we have the mountain we'll theme. dump all the sand right there yeah the mountain theme over there yeah mountains. and then we'll have you know you can't really see the mountains now but they're over there the lovely plains over there <laughs> it's a uh, such a unique breathtaking place yeah this is very special and also, like, over there, there's a bunch of, like, aspens and trees changing colors. And so you get this, like, just a lot of different landscapes in one area. It's, like, full-on autumn and fall over there. And then you feel like, well, it's not really summer. It doesn't feel like summer, but you got your shoes off. We got our shoes off. We're on the sand. It's crazy. Uh, we've just had so much fun playing in the sand dunes. It is really fun. It's so cool because you can just spread out like anywhere you want to. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of walking around, running around, <laughs> taking pictures, rolling around in the sand. I'm gonna have sand in my bag for like a hundred years now, everywhere. We've got it in our mouths somehow. I don't even know. <laughs> oh, it's been really fun. This is so interesting and I feel like this is a great place to come if you have kids for sure and you can bring dogs here so another bonus something you can't do at national parks a lot is bring dogs and we've seen dogs like running around the dunes it's really cute okay so Jasmine has been watching a lot of my videos because she found this as soon as we walked and she said leave it better than you found it so we already found some trash out there so as always leave it better than you found it to a ghost town and we are the only ones here. It was quite a drive coming in so this will be interesting. This ghost town is just really, really cool. Like it's just kind of an open air museum and you can just go to as much of it as you want. But the one thing that I'm really not enjoying is walking into these buildings. It's so bright outside, obviously with the sun and then you walk in these dark buildings and you walk in and you see this. Ah! <laughs> just a bunch of mannequins sitting around. A little terrifying. Hello, good sir. I'll tell you what though, this is like really authentic though. This is really, really interesting. 
we're having a really good time. We also got some Cokes. They had them in those re this really, really old fridge, $2. So we grabbed a Coke. We had some koozies in the car. We're having a good day. <laughs> I grew up not in the Southwest, in America, and so we don't really have ghost towns like this. So even as an American, this was so interesting to see how the miners lived in the 19th century. All right, so I've come back into the mercantile just to say that I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And if you have enjoyed it and want to see more videos like this, then why don't you subscribe? Comment below what was your favorite part of this vlog? What area would you like to show someone who is not from the States? Remember to leave it better than you found it, and I will see you in the next one. It's like the birds know as soon as I get out my Merlin app to listen to them. They don't, they stop making noise. Why do they do that? So rude. It's sand in it. It's a little windy. Very windy. <laughs> there, right over there. Little beach day, ma'am. Locks it is and furniture polish. Don't mix the two, that'll do you no good. Go team! We did it! Ah. Wow, all the enthusiasm, so much enthusiasm.